want this Don't try to stop me Never ain't an option So I'd be cautious I hope that you're watching Don't try to stop this Walk until I'm nauseous Cause I will not quit Not because I want this Don't try to stop me now Hello and welcome to the Team Turner YouTube channel. I often get asked questions about how I keep old cars on the road, why all I drive is old cars, and how in the world am I able to make long distance trips on a regular basis in these old cars without really having any problems, without having too many breakdowns or, or issues or anything like that. Um, and in this video I'm going to go over how to keep an old car on the road, high mileage car on the road what to pack, what to bring, what to do when you're on a long road trip to make sure that you're safe, you're not stressed, and, uh, and how I do it. The first thing to consider is what car are you going to take? For example, this red Saab in the garage. I love it. It's a fantastic car. I put a lot of work into it over the last couple of years, and it's been fine. But it has had a couple of issues. It's had a fuel pump go out, and it's had a couple other uh, little electrical gremlins that I'm just not comfortable taking it on a road trip. Um, you know, on the other hand, the Volvo V70R. This car's got getting close to 300,000 miles on it. I've been through it a few different times. I've gone through the maintenance. I know what quirks it has. I know what things have been fixed and what things still might need to be fixed. And I drive it all the time. I would trust it to drive on a long trip. I drive once a month, six and a half hours up into Canada to see my fiance. Um, I've driven several of these cars and I've only ever had one breakdown and of course it was in the Land Cruiser, the LX470 and it was something really dumb. It was an ignition switch rod that broke. Just an old part that got fatigued and left me stranded in a rest stop. Um, I'll get to how I handled that later but for now find a vehicle you trust. If you don't feel comfortable with your car then don't drive it. Maybe have it take it to a mechanic make sure that it's gone over and it's it's solid or do it yourself if you're inclined. Um, in this trip though, however, I'm getting ready to leave to go to Canada. Six hours, six and a half hours, this is the car I'm going to be taking. It's a 98 Volvo C70. It's been in the fleet for I think 12 or 13 years now, and it is a great car. It's also almost 25 years old. It has 180 some thousand miles, and I'm going to drive it with no problems at all because I am prepared for what's ahead of me. But Jason, how do you know that this car is going to make it on this long trip? It's old. It's used. It's been abused, probably. Well, I've done maintenance on it. For example, this engine has a new timing belt, water pump. All the scheduled maintenance that could be done uh, is up to date and ready to go. That's the first thing you can do and be prepared is make sure that your car is solid and it's ready to be used on a trip. Second thing is know your vehicle. Know what it's going to need. Know what it's going to use. For example, this car doesn't burn oil, but if your car did, you could check the level. You can check it at the beginning of a trip, check it every time you stop and get gas if you're concerned about it, which I made a little drip. Okay, it doesn't take more than a couple seconds to check it. Make sure that it's solid, make sure that it's not leaking or burning any oil. Um, the other major is gonna be coolant. Um, you can burn a little bit of oil and top it off from time to time. Some engines even are known to use oil. If you are losing coolant, however, that is a problem because then your car can overheat and it'll blow up quicker than anything. Um, if you are losing coolant, you need to have that issue addressed before you ever take it on a long road trip. Um, but, for example, this one's still full. Haven't had to mess with it in a while. I'm just going to let it be. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. The other fluid that you might want to check and it's not as big a deal on a long trip, is your transmission fluid. Now you're supposed to check it hot, but there are other fluids you can, you know, check. You got steering fluid, that's full. Just make sure that everything's topped off and ready to go. Um, if a fluid is low or if a fluid is leaking, you notice puddles on the ground, that's a great indication that there's something wrong that needs to be fixed. The next thing you're gonna wanna check, and this is one of the most common breakdowns you can have on the road, is tires. Um, you know, if you get a puncture, there's only so much you can do. Um, I keep a tire pressure gauge in the car at all times, just in case. Now, 
point towards new cars. A lot of them have these, uh, these sensors in the tires that will tell you what the pressures are live on your dashboard. Old cars don't have that. And um, personally, I don't care one way or the other. It makes, I think it makes people lazy and complacent. Um, plus, they cost a fortune to repair and replace when something goes wrong. I keep a simple tire gauge. It costs less than five bucks. I keep it in the glove box. And you can check the pressure on the tires. This one's at about 34 PSI. I've checked them all. I'm just showing you how to do it. But they're all good. Also, you want to make sure that your tread is decent. There are wear bars on the tire that I can show maybe in a different video how to check that. But there are uh, tread depth indicators. There are, uh, you'll see cracks and stress marks and stuff in your rubber if there is a problem with the tire. Um, in general, you want to make sure your tires don't have any um, any issues, make sure they're inflated properly, and you can make sure that the date code on the tire is within spec also. Uh, I'm not sure where it is on these exactly, but I just got them a couple years ago, so they'll be fine. Speaking of tires, always make sure if your car has one, you have a spare. Now, this one's good. I mean, you don't have to check the pressure. It's a good idea to check the pressure, but just in case, um, you know, sometimes they do go flat in your trunk. You want to make sure that it has good air pressure. Um, speaking of, I actually just realized that I took the jack out of this car and put it in something else. So I'm going to go grab the jack out of that one because um, it's the same. And just to make sure I have it on a road trip. Uh, it's a good thing I checked because I would have left without it. Now, a lot of newer cars actually don't even come with a spare tire. They just have an inflator kit, maybe a patch kit. Um, those are good to have, but sometimes you have a blowout that is just too severe. Uh, and if you don't have a spare tire with you, it's going to leave you on the side of the road needing a tow truck. So nice thing about older cars, a lot of them come with spares, even if it's a space saver, a donut. Um, at least it has something that if you need to change it, you can change it on the side of the road. Well, now here's something interesting. This is a good idea to be prepared, and this is something that, that can come up. Uh, I went to top off the spare because it was just a little bit low. It had about uh, 28 PSI in it. So I was just going to put a little bit in. I put the air inflator on the valve. Right there. That valve stem has a crack in it. I didn't notice it. It was brittle. And uh, when, the, uh, when the inflator moved a little bit, it tore the rubber on the valve stem. So it's a good thing I caught that or else I would be without a spare. Luckily, I'm just going to steal the one out of that car for now and I'll deal with this when I get back home. But um, yeah, it's a good thing I checked. This is why you go over your car before you leave. All right, now I have replaced that donut, the one that was bad, with a good one. Holds 60 PSI, pulled it out of my wagon. Also has a jack and a tool, has everything I need in case I have a flat tire and need to change it. Also, um, this car doesn't really matter because it's just front wheel drive, but if you have an all wheel drive car like this one, you need to make sure that your donut or whatever spare you have is the same diameter as your wheels. Um, if you have one that's bigger or smaller, it can damage the all-wheel drive stuff. This car is not a huge deal. You just need to learn your vehicle uh, and see if it matters or not and uh, make those accommodations accordingly. Now, in the trunk, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Oh, and also for you uh, people in the comments, there's no fuse on this power wire, so it's not going to arc. Because I know somebody's going to say it. In the trunk, I keep... Uh, a little bit of transmission fluid and a, t and a funnel because I do uh, know that this car does leak just a little bit of transmission fluid. Um, I can probably make this whole trip uh, a couple times without having to refill it, but you know, there's uh, just in case, there's a little bit in there. I have some spare turn signal bulbs. I must have needed one. I have wipes. Um, now, here's the next set of items that I take with me. Um, this is a toolbox, just a regular rigid box. You don't have to buy anything special, just a regular toolbox or a container of some sort. You want to keep it on hand. In this box, this is the first item I keep. This is, it's just a bag. It doesn't have to be special. I keep a tire inflator that works with your cigarette lighter. With that, I keep tire plugs and the tools to patch them. I also have some cutters to snip off extra. I have a wheel chalk. Um, there's some zip ties in there. You will have zip. I'll have zip ties in just about every bag. Um, I guess that's the, the drift car life. But um, I keep all that stuff, which that allows me to, on the side of the road, if I have a simple puncture like a nail or screw or something small, I can patch it on the side of the road without even having to change that tire. Um, I can leave the tire that's on the car, remove the screw or nail, 
um, patch it, inflate it, and move on with the day. Um, the other thing I have, obviously, a set of jumper cables. This is heavy. But this is a tool roll. Now, this might be a bit much for somebody that's just trying to go on a simple road trip, but I work on all my own stuff. Here's what I keep in my tool roll. Um, wrenches, I got standard and metric. Uh, if it's, this is a Volvo, if it's an import, most of my cars are imports, but I do drive the van, I do drive other stuff. So it's a good idea to have both if you use it in multiple vehicles. Um, next pocket, sockets, same thing, standard and metric, full set. I've got ratchet, I've got extensions of various sizes. Uh, I have a handful of other um, adapters and little things in here that I may need. This one I have screwdrivers, flathead, and Phillips. I got a set of Allen keys, Allen wrenches, and then this one. I keep some gloves, some zip ties, a little flashlight. Um, you know, I have just a variety of things. And this isn't a rule of what needs to be here, what doesn't. This isn't, I'm not a professional. This is what I've put together. Um, it's worked for me several times. Plus, I, I grow this kit as I find something that I need or if I ever have an issue and I don't have a tool, I'll buy it, I'll put it in a tool roll, and I'll have it for next time. Um, this is a bucket boss. I think I found it on Amazon a couple years ago, and I really like them. They roll up nice. You can close them up. Once you get them rolled, snatch these down tight, and you can throw it back in your toolbox. So now I've packed the toolbox, and it's going to go in the trunk first. It's going to go all the way in the back. It's heavy. <laughs> it's going to go all the way in the back. Shouldn't need it. There you go. All right, now here are some things I keep on the inside of the car to make this trip easier for me personally. Um, and part of keeping it low stress and, and you know not being worried about uh, things on the trip is that you have everything you need also. Um, so for example, let's go through the glove box first. I've got some napkins. I have an OBD2 scanner. Now it doesn't have to be an expensive one. Um, make sure that your car actually uses this. Older ones, I think it's 95 or 96, may, you know, older, may not use them. This is a 98. Um, being a turbo car, if you put cheap gas in it, sometimes it'll throw a check engine light. Um, or if you just get bad gas, it'll throw a check engine light. And it's nice to, even if there's not a major problem, at least be able to clear that light so it runs better, um, you know, once you get that, that rectified. Uh, the other thing I keep, I showed you earlier, tire pressure gauge. Keep your registration, your insurance, and I keep my manual for the car and manual for the radio, manual for anything that needs a manual stays in the glove box. That way, in case there's an issue with any item, I know how to fix it. Um, the other thing I have, this phone chart or phone holder. Uh, I'm real particular about a phone holder. I've had so many over the years, and the worst thing is when you're on the road, you're driving, and um, your phone falls out or you know won't stay in the holder or you can't get it back in the holder without using two hands um, this one i found on amazon it's just they're not that expensive i think it's 10 or 15 bucks but you squeeze it stays in there's a little button on the back opens up i found it's real nice you can just set your phone in it um, and not have any issues with it falling out and be able to do it all with one hand really easily and then the next thing i keep obviously phone charger whatever phone you have, make sure it reaches to your holder. Um, if you're using a GPS or, or music or anything from your phone, you're going to want that. Uh, one trip without it, you'll never forget it again because you'll let your phone be dead. Um, okay, then here in the center, uh, for long trips, I keep my wallet in here. I don't like having it in my pocket, under my butt. Uh, it just makes, it kind of hurts your back after a while. You'll notice that it's way more comfy without having that in your pocket. Um, because I'm going to Canada, passport. Um, I keep a pair of earbuds. These are just some Bluetooth earbuds that I got uh, from Amazon. Doesn't have to be anything special, just uh, you want it to be able to be hands-free. If you have a phone call or something come in, you can throw those in your ears and um, it's a lot easier. Plus a lot of places now where it's illegal to actually hold your phone to your ear. So if you have earbuds, that makes that not an issue. Um, keep some nasal spray. I have bad allergies, so 
Uh, you want to make sure you have that if you need it. Have it in the car. Uh, I've made the mistake a few times of putting it in my bag in the trunk, and then you can't get to it when you need it. I like just keeping it on hand, ready to go. Um, and then obviously, a pair of sunglasses, whatever you like, um, in case you end up driving into the sun. One last thing I forgot to mention, because this is going to be a teamwork between man and machine, or driver and car, um, you want to make sure you're doing all right too. Keep your water with you. I have a couple extra in a cooler. Um, I always make sure there's at least one in a cup holder ready to go. That way you can stay uh, hydrated, you're not going to get thirsty, um, helps you stay awake, you know. Just, uh, it's good to keep yourself uh, just as in shape as... All right, let's do a cold start. cylinder burble sounds so good. Uh, this car has a two and a half inch downpipe and uh, custom made exhaust with uh, it's, it's kind of a no-name muffler but it's stainless and it sounds really nice. So another good thing to check when you're going on a road trip is your lights. Um, you want to make sure that everything works. You want to make sure that all the lights are on, are working, turn signals, headlights, taillights brake lights, you name it. If it has them, they should be working because uh, it's a good way to get pulled over. Also, it's just kind of bad form. All right, let's go. Getting ready to leave for Canada. One thing I want to show, full tank of gas. That's another thing you want to do when you're driving on a long trip is uh, don't let your gas tank get too low. I know it's tempting to run it all the way down to nothing and um, you know, and then you, you end up getting more miles out of your tank or you can drive a little longer, but um, it's really bad on your fuel pump to run it low like that. The fuel pumps will actually use the gas in the tank to help keep them cool. And if you run them low, they can get uh, hot and overheated. And um, it's not good on a new car, but especially on a car, if you're driving something a little older, that fuel pump's been in there a while. And uh, you know, you let it overheat a few times, and that could be the end of it. So uh, yeah, avoid fuel pump uh, failures. I would say keep it above a quarter tank at the bare minimum. And it's always safer uh, to keep it over half a tank uh, in general. I've had an issue actually, I wasn't sure I was gonna make it home. Uh, one, one time I ended up coming back from Canada but it was super late at night. Um, it was probably three in the morning or something. And uh, I was getting low on gas and a lot of the gas stations were closed. Uh, and that was my own stupid fault for not having the tank full enough. Um, I should have topped off back when stuff was open and I didn't think about it. So just a good idea to keep an eye on your gas tank and uh, make sure that everything is, uh, yeah, everything's good to go. Less stress that way.
94 in Michigan. Never stop working on yourself no matter how inconvenient it is for everybody else. Yes. Detroit's always wild, I'll tell you what. Alright, we got a full tank of gas, and we're only about, I want to say, maybe 15, 20 minutes from the border. Uh, I like to get gas in the States before we get up there. Um, it's way cheaper down here. Gas in Canada is way more expensive, and a lot of times they don't have 93. Uh, usually the, the rest stops along the highway only have 91.
except they have a Tim Hortons. There's a Tim Hortons right there. I do love my Tim Hortons. I'm going to get one later, a little farther down the road. This is the 401 in Canada. Runs from Windsor, I think, all the way out to Ottawa, Toronto. This is the coolest highway. I don't know. We we don't have stuff like this in Indiana. It's wide. It's flat. You know, even at rush hour, it's not as busy as a lot of our highways in the states. It's just set the cruise and drive for three hours. Uh, it's fantastic. six hours and ten minutes this time. Not my record, but not too bad. Car made it just fine. No issues at all. Good morning. It is the next day. Uh, car made it just fine. Didn't have any problems at all. Uh, I went over, I'm going over to Tim Hortons right now to get a coffee, so I'm not quite all there yet it's still too early um, I did a quick once over on the car once I got here and uh, the fluids are fine tire pressures are fine those are the main things that I check um, I generally don't have a problem with stuff um, on this car but it is 25 years old or so so you know it's always good to at least know and be aware of what's going on Small double double, please. Yeah. That's it. Would you like to travel or is pick a donut today? Uh, no, that's okay. No problem. Your total comes to 157. Thank you. You can drive off. Thank you. Thank you. Vacation with my fiance for a few days. 
just uh, back on the 401, cruising along. This is uh, about three hours or so before I hit the border. Uh, I'm gonna stop once for gas to top off. Car's doing great, no issues at all. Uh, I checked tire pressures and fluid levels before I left, uh, just because that's that's uh, safe, it's a safe thing to do. Um, and yeah, so more footage of the road. I just had breakfast. Oh. Puppy. making great time and now I'm on I-94 in Michigan and we're sitting perfectly still for no real reason that I can tell fantastic uh oh this just happened I uh, got a check engine light on I was passing somebody got into boost a bit and it started came on it flashed a few times which tells me it's most likely a misfire, like a knock, uh, knock sense type of a, a code, knock sensor. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and use the OBD scanner that I put in the glove box that I talked about earlier. I'm going to go ahead and um, plug this in and check it. Now I don't recommend doing this while driving. Um, however, Volvo makes it very convenient because they put the plug right here in the center console. So plug that in like so. We'll see what it says. Welcome to Indiana. Welcome to Indiana. Back in Indiana, by the way. Fantastic. All right, six codes. It threw a hissy fit. All right. 04, 305, 300 and then pending codes for those. So those are all misfire codes. Now, I, I have a feeling I know what the problem is. I'm gonna go ahead and erase these, which again, most cars won't let you do it while you're driving. Um, Volvos will. It's probably not great, but it works. Okay, erasing, let's see. It's gonna flash an arrow and a couple other things. Light's gone. Okay, done. Now I can unplug this. All right, now, what I think happened, and this has happened to me before with Volvos, is when you take them out of the country or you, you, know, you drive them on a trip, sometimes you're not able to get 93 octane gas, which is what they really like to have, especially if you have any mods or anything like that done to it. Now this car is mostly stock. Um, it is running NA cams. Um, and it's got some intake and exhaust mods, which really shouldn't cause too much of a problem, and it doesn't. Um, but I think the intake cams, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the NA cams from a non-turbo car, they have a more lift and duration, and it changes the way the engine runs. It sucks more air in. Put them in a turbo car, that ends up creating, um, you know, multiple situations that the engine can get more air than the stock computer really expects it to. So what happened was I passed somebody, I got into boost kind of hard, and I had recently filled up with gas in Canada, because that's where I was at, and I, they only had 91 octane. Um, I got into boost, the knock sensor sensed that I was getting some spark knock, which will happen if your fuel is not um, you know, high enough grade, and it popped the check engine light on. Um, all the codes were for cylinder misfires or multiple misfires. So I'm not worried about it too much. Like I said, it's done this before and it doesn't really concern me because I think that we're just a little outside of what the stock computer knows how to handle for um, having a lesser potent fuel with um, you know, some of the light mods that are done on the car. Um, on a stock vehicle, it should take care of it. The computer will just pull timing and figure itself out. Um, both, both of my cars do this. Both Volvos, the, the C70 and the V70R will do this if I put some uh, less than 93 octane gas. If I just put along all day, it's probably fine. But if I get into boost pretty hard, um, you know, then I may end up with, uh, with the check engine light. That's why I brought the scanner. It's good to be prepared, you know. I checked it anyway, even though I had a pretty good idea what it was, in case it was something more serious that I could look into it further. So I cleared the light. And, um, you know, as long as it stays off and doesn't, uh, doesn't come back on on the trip home the rest of the way, then we're good to go. Just wanted to keep everybody updated. It's not all uh, rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes you end up with little problems and hiccups, and knowing how to handle them really is uh, the best way to be prepared. All right, we're back home a couple days later. Look at all the bugs. God. <laughs> so yeah, hit a uh, hit quite a few bugs on the way. Well, I'm gonna do uh, what I like to call a reset. Once I get back home from a long trip, um, I'm gonna take the car out. I'm gonna wash it real well. Uh, I'm gonna go through, check all the fluids again, check all the tires again, um, refill any supplies that I had to use. If there was like first aid kit or fluids or 
uh, napkins in the glove box even, just anything that I could need that I might have used on the trip. Go ahead and top that stuff back off, make sure everything's good to go. Um, just make sure it's ready to go again for next time. If you, de if you stay on top of it uh, every trip or, or if you don't go out of town very often, every couple of weeks even, just stay on top of the things with the car. Uh, it's going to pay off in the long run, be a lot more reliable, a lot less stressful. Mm -hmm.